Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Let's begin tonight. I want to establish a few things and then we'll pray. You make all things new, yes, you make all things new and I will follow you forward. That's what he's doing in someone's life tonight. You make all things new. God has no favorites in the kingdom. Listen to me. God has no favorites in the kingdom. God loves everyone in the kingdom equally, but he does not trust everyone equally. God has no favorites in the kingdom. But the operation of God, when you read the Bible, it makes it look as though God had a soft spot for certain people and he seemed to reject others. Until you understand the character of the operation of the kingdom, you may think God has favorites. God has no favorite preachers. God has no favorite businessmen. God has no favorite students. God has no favorite history makers. Every man is saddled with the responsibility of charting the course of his destiny. And the degree to which we come into alignment with God's presence is the degree to which it looks like God is tilting towards our direction. It's very important that I say this because we live in a society that the difference is clear in everything. Among preachers, the difference is clear. There are men of God struggling and struggling and struggling to make it happen. There are men of God struggling to do what they call ministry. In the world of finance, there are those making impact and there are those living as if God hates them. In the world of family life, there are others raising award-winning children. There are others raising arm robbers and cowards and thieves and, and nuisance to society. In the world of impact, there are those that the hand of God is mighty upon. They are shaking lands and territories. And yet there are others crouching and scrambling for relevance. What is responsible for this difference? Could it be that God decided to choose others? Could it be that God just hated others? Is that really it? What would be responsible, brothers and sisters, for a man who rises up as a nobody? The map of your village not being on the map. And yet you rise to be a global phenomenon. Where people say, thank God you were born. Thank God you did not die. Blessed is the womb that produced this child. What makes that difference? That a man will be born a pauper with rain falling and yet at the end of his life he is a generational blessing. His name becomes an access key to favor. That every time you say I am associated with Sam they say which Sam? Because of that access is given. What is responsible for this difference in society? It's not enough just to love God and know God and pray in tongues. A true apostolic ministry prepares people to be agents of societal transformation. It's not enough just to pray in tongues. The Bible never said you are the light of the church. It said you are the light of cosmos, the world. There is a level of impact and illumination that comes from the church. The key, the key to world evangelization is not necessarily evangelism as we know. It is evangelism but not one-on-one -on -one preaching and sharing tracts. We will never win souls that way till Jesus comes. 
the key to transgenerational impact and bringing territories to the submission of the Christ is hidden in one word influence. 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 The mystery word that holds the key to compelling generations to come to the Lordship of Christ. Everybody say influence. Influence will do more than tracks will do. Influence will do more than crusades will do. Influence. At every given point in your life, your decisions, your values are being altered by someone you look up to as a role model. Consciously or unconsciously. And therefore the key to bringing earth, our territories, cosmos, to the obedience of Christ is ascending intentionally to a position of kingdom influence that grants us access to the minds of people and that they can, by our influence, buy into our ideology which seeks to enthrone Christ as king. This is the gospel. The gospel is not just a message that saves sinners. The gospel is an ideology like a terrorist ideology. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purpose. First, that spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. Then, the influence of his jurisdiction across the strata of society. If we are not doing this, there is no reason why we should be alive. No matter what kind of conference, convention, impartation, if it does not lead to what I just told you, then it's a waste. The summary of all that I just said is called kingdom advancement. The intentional strategic frontiering of the influence of the Christ in the earth. This is consistent with the eternal plan of God. What is the eternal plan of God? According to Colossians, that all things be headed up in the Christ. And I told you that that plan of God, all mankind and creation will come to the submission of the Christ by a principle called the reflection principle. The reflection principle. An entity confers power on another as a proof of his might and royalty. The mystery of the sun and the moon. The moon does not have a glory of its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. If you want to see the excellency of the brightness of the sun, you look at the moon. The degree to which the moon aligns with the sun is the degree to which it it shines. Hallelujah. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you busy until Jesus comes. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you until you get a job or until you graduate or until you get married. Christianity is an ideology. The faith life is an ideology. It's a movement. It's a cause. There is something we are doing. God has an intention in his mind. And he expects every inhabitant in the earth to be given an opportunity to understand that. His emphasis right now is building his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. And that's what we call being born again. The establishment of the reign and the rule of the Christ in the hearts of men. Not just coming for altar call. Call, altar call is not enough to get you born again. It gets you saved. But to be born a new and to be transformed, the Christ needs to be established in your heart. The degree to which the word of God finds expression in your life, the degree to which you have submitted to the principles of the kingdom, is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord of your life. Are we, are we understanding? One of the biggest limitations I, I taught us that there are two major limitations to the advancement of the kingdom. That the first, the Bible calls it the gate of hell. That's it's just a recap. And I told us that the gate of hell defines the scope of Satan and every arsenal that he brings, his tricks, his strategies that he brings to bring the whole world into deception. But that's not even the biggest limitation. The biggest of all limitations is the mind. Our mental alignment to the ways of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for your prosperity. This is what is responsible for your impact. This is what is responsible for the flow of God's power. Now, preachers have 
erroneously taught people every time you talk about the mind preachers shift people to they shift that topic to business people and entrepreneurs and, and um, um, proprietors and all those who have to deal with the corporate life so here they are sweating and believing they are training their spirit whenever you talk about mind they say no no no, no it's, it's, it's alright I'm not a businessman the mind is the access point for the spirit to find expression in your life. You ignore your mental development. You ignore the alignment of your mind to the government of the Christ. You will fail in life in every respect. I can never change you until I change your mind. I can never change you Till I alter your ideology because your life revolves around your thinking around your perception about life there's nothing I can do about your current situation until you are willing to submit your mind to something better it's God speaking to us so let's read Proverbs 23 verse 7 help us Holy Spirit 1 to read just the first phrase you don't need to read all of those ones down one to read for as he thinketh in his heart or in his mind so is he it equates the summation of your ideologies to the quality of your life meaning the quality of my life as an ambassador of the kingdom as a husband, as a father, as a leader, is dependent on my the sum total of the ideologies that inform my decisions. Profound truth. Profound truth. That a man's life is helplessly at the mercy of his mindset. I've done many teachings about mindsets and I will not stop until a transition happens. The key to persuasion is repetition. Not information. Repetition. When a truth is repeated, it, it becomes a priority to you. And that's the goal of this teaching. God is doing a mighty work in your life. God is transforming mighty men in this place. He won't stop he won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop till his church is like him. He won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like him. You know why I must preach this? Because seated where you are is the destiny of thousands that have been connected to your grace and your life and your refusal to rise will make thousands to go to hell millions to perish imagine if there was no Benny Hinn. imagine if there was no Reinhard Bonke right imagine if all of the mighty men that have brought great impact in this generation did not rise I refuse to let your tears stop me I refuse to let your anger with me stop me. I will teach it until that transformation happens. You may not see a need to thank me now, but as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, when you see the excellency of your life above that of your contemporaries, you will find a reason to say, Lord, I thank you. The training process is always difficult because mankind has been designed to live in a comfort zone. We are designed to live around an environment that massages our current level but every time the word begins to come the first thing that happens is your current mentality will resist it because it knows that it will have to choose to accept that it is wrong and change and accepting faults is one of the biggest um, ego stinging things for mankind to say oh I'm wrong I may not have gotten it so we prefer to excuse it away and remain. Friends live together for as long as they think together. 
the moment one begins to think above, the environment starts driving him away. Right? I'm challenging you because there's something about your life. Koinonia is an apostolic word. Only with the eye of the Spirit will you see the kind of mighty men that are being used. There are more people. This crowd constitutes only less than 10% of the total people who will listen to this message. And so I'm speaking to nations. I'm speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to territories. Somebody will be listening to this message who is lying down at the end of his life and saying, God, is this how my life will be? And God is saying, there is a way out. The way out is not giving you money. The way out is not parting you when you do not deserve to be part of The way out is to Oh, 
otherwise you will sit in that position of regret and watch your children later join you. That's what has happened. We have a generation of irresponsible people, spiritually irresponsible, mentally irresponsible, physically irresponsible. There has been a transgenerational game of blaming one generation blaming another for their failures. One generation blaming another. Nigerians blame government. Africans blame their parents. They blame institutions. Our refusal to turn and say, what can I do to live where I am? Gideon was a little boy who was hiding. He heard of the miracles that happened. And now, he was there in Houston, an angel appears to him and says, Oh, thou mighty man of faith, can you be the changer of this pattern in a generation? Let me tell you something. My message will mean very little to you, and you will hate me if you are someone with a mindset that believes someone somewhere is responsible for your success and your advancement. If you have that kind of mindset here, your first assignment tonight is repent. Can we have a witness for that? Hallelujah. Everyone say in the name of Jesus, I take full responsibility for my current position spiritually, financially, socially. I take full responsibility and I am willing to pay the price to change that pattern. Say it one more time in the name of Jesus. I refuse resentment. I refuse blaming people. I make up my mind that from today I take full responsibility for the outcome of everything in my life. That's right. That's the thing, the decision that begins to change your life. You say this among your colleagues and they will insult you. Some of you are even feeling nervous as you are saying this because it is very comfortable to believe your father is the reason why you are not serving. That foolish man was a herbalist. But what of the mercy of God that has brought you to see the light? There are preachers, there are many pastors in different ministries who believe that the reason why they are not rising is because the geo or the man of God is not laying hands on them to do impartation. My challenge to you before we continue is that language of responsibility. Please pray one minute. Say, Lord, I make up my mind. Pray, pray, open your mouth. Don't just pray in your heart. Willingly and consciously before heaven this day, this day, this day, the 22nd of May, I make up my mind that from today, I begin to take full responsibility for the outcome of my life. If any change will happen, it depends on you and God. If your generation must hear your voice, it depends on you and God. Pray. 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 I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the north, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. Ask 
I'm a lady, that's why. They should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed, that's why. I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and He didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time. I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives. You will be casting your prayer before so. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truth to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan, to challenges, and to success. Your mindset, your ideologies, determines your response to God, people, Satan, challenges, and ultimately success. The Bible keeps telling us again and again. Solomon speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart. God is in it. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter I believe 4 4 verse 20 Keep your heart with all what? Diligence, seriousness, tenacity. He says, for out of it are the issues. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. Please look at me. I submit to you. I have seen people suffer. I have seen the bitter wind that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any life. You can choose to listen to what I am telling you. Or you can stand where you are and watch life make you want to lose your faith, lose your salvation, and ultimately end up here. Is that serious? Keep your heart. It is your responsibility. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it, out of your ideologies are the issues, the decisions that frame you. about increase, your mindset about hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. Wishing has never changed the life of God. Wishing only, only gives you with choice, emotional consolation. Oh, I wish I would be anointed by Pastor Jesus. Oh, I wish I would be able to do this. Oh, I wish that God would use me. I wish you use me.
I want to drink water is a decision. That's the water thing. I want to drink water is a wish. Or a strong desire. I decide to drink water means I set it as a goal and I am ready to find out what it takes to get that water. Are you seeing that now? A decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result. Many people wish for their own thing. I wish. I wish. Many people wish for a big church. Many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. I decide to make impact. I decide to be relevant. I decide to do big things for the king. Hallelujah. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? Because your life is a reflection of your life. I've taught this, but let me recap on it again. Very Remember, I told you that there is a law. The law of manifestation. And that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset. The inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies. By and large, your mentality about prosperity will show physically. By and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show. If children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak. Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality now. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. He, or let me use a, a term that is now. Compare a CEO, right, of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be? With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the mega is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the mega convinces himself that the poor guy is not saying this man is not doing. Just sits down on the chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and is getting millions. My challenge is this transfer them for two months. Transfer them. Meaning, tell them, may God, we hereby give you this office, it's yours, for two months, and tell the ogre go to the gate. The ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office. Are you getting my point? He's going to look and say, Is there something we can do? Is there something we can do? Right there at the gate, you will start consulting services. Right there at the gate, you will think and say, How can I reduce this effort? How can I reduce the physical effort? And then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate. Are you seeing that now? Whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and, 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 and the, the keys, a bunch of keys to a gate. Meanwhile, let's go to our man in the office there. The man is in the office and when he sits down, the next thing is he opens the fridge, sees apples, dates, all kinds of things. And he says, my son, he forgets. No, no, no. See how cheap his 
mindset is he forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating and quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it and he thinks what can I sell quickly and he says oh God generate us for his name in India in two months that office becomes his mindset are you seeing that now you come in and see it dirty scattered they've sold a lot of things they've sold the company generator they've done all sorts of things right workers are not paid whereas you find out that the, the blessed man the CEO has changed the gate and you make it because what is the difference their mindset they think the difference is money they think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars no those things are a reflection of something. When you see a man mightily used by God, his life is a reflection of something. Are, are we following? Are we together? The next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed, do not envy what you see. Try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself. to you what is in my mind you will be like me but you will stop at my limit if I can transfer to you what I have and challenge you to rise higher you will be higher than me you see that preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset a preacher who is not for instance an interpreter and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches me. All he will tell people is just pray and be serious. The God of favor, God of honor, God of peace, the God who located me will locate you and the people shout amen. And they stop here and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people. The preacher himself, not knowing why he's successful, he thinks he's successful because he's preaching. No. There are some of you, you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life. Something about you resents people. And if you do not take the time to study it and change it and say, I'm like that, my mother never had any friend with me. You see it, the transference. talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people. Right? Number one is the mindset that read what we know today to be low self-esteem right now. It's very important. I'm about to say something that bless you. What is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced, consciously or subconsciously, that you are not good enough, that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage. That there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard. A status quo. Are you getting my point? It's a terrible mindset. A terrible mental state of being. Because it produces dangerous fruits. And we're about to see if you know them. Let me tell you. The foolishness of many people in society. From preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders. Is motivated by this mindset, subtle or dangerous, low self-esteem. What does low self-esteem do? Low self-esteem, when it is matured in a man, becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life, becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people, 
becomes the sponsor um, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance. So all that fight for titles, all that fight for recognition, all that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of your self-esteem. Are we blessed? So a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair, she can be beautiful and guys will not see her. Wherever she got that ideology, and then she finds out that the wig on is 15,000 and that becomes a good She's under pressure, borrowing money, trying to prove all kinds of things. And then when she buys it and puts it, she's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status. God's spirit was. So we have preachers with their clubs and societies. Right? That is based on something they believe they have to do to match up. So a man of God thinks I can teach or I can prophesy and his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow. Are you getting my point? Even to the point of witchcraft and when he gets it he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me I will be like so so man are you seeing that now a poisonous mindset this is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters fathers and mothers a father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a CEO and I am an assistant director and his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down are we blessed now low self esteem a mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually. Low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience, especially young people. They want to buy the car now. They want to marry now. Right? They want sharp, sharp money now. Sharp, sharp success. You want to start a ministry and in four months have a record breaking 5,000 crowd. Low self-esteem. Tell them in the village, God is not here. Okay. You see that? Tell them. That means there is a them you have been walking through. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am not. It's not enough reason. Is God helping us? Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self esteem. Our low self esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative man because you believe. And all sorts of people. I look at people I know at the level I am now. I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing, and some of them are students. You know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them. But that low self esteem, especially ladies, sisters, say amen. Especially these ladies. You see a tiny lady moving around, self esteem is pushing her, and she goes to meet an one big ungodly military officer. You that you can destroy her life because she wants to say, I am going out with somebody in church. Right? And that, oh, you think I don't know, you are joking. It's God speaking to us. There are many preachers, they start preaching now, and they say, guys, if I go, they will, they will, they will know that they will acknowledge me. So let me start going on air. And the grace to go on air has not been released. So the resources to back it up is not there. And they keep yoking their members week after week. There are business people who start a business now and they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy or go and die in Brazil. Right? Low self-esteem. Being a motivation for many things. That's why you see preachers come. Please. Look at men of God for instance. When another man of God is about to see one, everybody is starting to see one. As a proof, right? Meaning that the one who greets one is accepted. You see, we carry our villages, we carry our pain, we carry our backgrounds, mix it with the anointing, mix it with ministry, and off we go misleading many people. So he comes to me, and then I cannot greet him. There are geos who will never turn and greet. 
Psalms 141 verse 3 An uncultured use of words God is helping us right? An uncultured use of words Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3 Everyone read One to read of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words. Many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know that these decoration people there's a way they behave? Uncultured words. Many of us have had witchcraft attacked because our mouth introduced us to things of truth. Do you know, see that lady, that fine one, the other one, that very fine one, that's my wife. In fact, I'm even planning, I think I should get to jam. There's one morning I'm waiting, and while you're coming here, and I say, when the people say you are going to get to jam. Everything has been working, all of a sudden, everything scatters. Our mouth, there are many of us who plan to buy a car in 10 years. I'm not saying confession of faith, telling people. Restaurant to say things that should not be. Set a watch. Put a gate, oh God, in my mouth that I will know when to speak. Nobody mocked you because they did not know you were buried. You carried your mouth, running it around, telling people and saying, Don't tell anybody. For what? Tell me, don't, I don't know you, you don't tell anybody. It's me that said, Benga's wife. It's a that and that happened. We have put ourselves in trouble because we can not show up. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the sin, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. You must learn to know when to speak and when to talk. Many of you have been out of yourself because your father came and met you and said, I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be mature, you say, Leave her, Jared, she's a wicked woman, only for you to hear her own side. And she said, There's something I'm not doing. Your father's been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied because you have backed your father and ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height. Of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been feeling you for this. Ah! God is changing lives. So say, what happens? Then? The rate at which masturbation is disturbing me. I can't. I can't. There's some product that you don't even expect. See that? you this and then later the guy will say I'm not doing and the friend say how far our marriage hey, God is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say the Bible says a word spoken in due season there is a due season for communication is God helping us mindsets 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 many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said there's one village project please. we're allocating the task of five million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering and the man is building a community somewhere because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. 
one time one lady came and met me she thought it was good news very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with and I think one time I don't know let me assume the guy was carried away and he wanted to make advances and, and, and do a lot of things and she, she advised him and at the end he felt bad he said no I don't know what came over me let's pray this and that and then she came to talk to me and she, she thought it was going to be a good news she says honestly I need to tell you something it's not every man of God that is a man of God I knew where she was going to I listened to her and there are some things you don't come to pay for praise the Lord and then she came and met me that ah, this and that and that this person did this can I imagine that this person did this she was so disappointed she's still being disappointed she still did this and I said shame on you one because you were was it not in a room was it outside it happened you went to the room you were also tempted you would not accept that part of your role the role you played in seducing him you, are you saying you did not see the advancement coming you were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can't take it. Is that not how it happens? It was holding you, doing all kinds of things. You were enjoying it. When you felt it now crossed the boundary, what you call boundary, you now started talking. And you are coming to report it. Rather than praying and humble yourself. I'm not justifying immorality. I'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded, uncultured communication. And the way she was talking to me, I knew she has told me that. We are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. And you get what I'm saying? But many people have run down the churches and the things of the waters because of certain things. Especially this immorality. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. They say you are the... And I remember one lady who met me and said that you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without speaking to me. I said it's a sign that you need to while you are concentrating and saying people are doing this, there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people. Rather than thinking you are so seductive, you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Unguarded communications. Unguarded communications. Matters that don't concern you. It's amazing. You hear people talking about their father, talking about their mother, talking about their sister. A lady met me and said, ah, that uh, her sister just got married, though, sharp, sharp, she's now pregnant. I said, shut your mouth. You, are, you, you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication. Look at what drives you. Look, I'm teaching you this because it will save you from. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of two many people, including your destiny helpers. Every time they mention your name to lift you, people say, may God forbid, I rather die than to give this person to This person is a destroyer of destiny. Have you seen people like that? You come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say, my brother, I'm a Christian. Uh, I will hide this thing from you. There's something I want to tell you about this lady. I saw the way you are blind flower and blind by flower and all of these things. All these things you are doing. What is this lady has been rocking her life since she was auntie? You are just coming innocently. You don't know you, you think she's a nice lady. And the guy said, eh. Well, I'm not saying she has HIV, but there's something go for test. Some of us listen. Mindset, listen to me. It's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started to feel running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White. Right now, that Creflo Dollar, you see it on, on news. That Creflo Dollar asked his congregation to buy him 65 million naira. That's not true. That's not true. Have you seen that now? Everybody, those who have been angry, there are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we all We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches, called their fathers witches. Listen, give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth and say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut. And to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. On 
guarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this, stand up. To mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And he spent one hour just for offering. On guarded use of your mouth. You just disgrace yourself and drew yourself in ashes. Are we growing to right? Some of these issues will be good, but this is what makes leaders come to Notice that leaders are calm. There are people who evaluate things. There are people who look up to things. Because one day, somebody is going to say something about your life, your ministry, your business. Is that true? God will bless you. The words are true. They don't carry it. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline in your house. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. You may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you And your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, Why? What is what is the feeling of the And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has brought you. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than a certificate to pay. It's God speaking to us. Preachers. God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and will strangle him. Everybody will come and say, We are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you title. There are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous. Don't think everybody is struggling. There are people seated quietly. I know them. There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Grace to God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office here. Never be the one. 
let it not be your rule that when they want to run down people who are going to the place where they say, let's meet at that, that, uh, that usual joint. And when you come say, hey, before they reach, they sit down first, let me deserve you with their as you Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house. Because if I can find my way there, my neighbor has one friend that I know that in my shift years it might be people that is one of them my sister and they are letting me know and they will see that my neighbor's friend I've seen my neighbor do times when regular human activities challenges you share that testimony and that will
but the people never call us back because there is something about our mindset. You go to preach in the church, you don't study the way the church setting is. You just turn and run your mouth and say anything, anyhow to anybody. You go to a church that is predominantly elders. Your packaging and communication must suit the context of your conference. You go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I preach in all kinds of churches and they like me. I preach in all kinds of places because I pay the price of understanding. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, in the military cantonment and you were speaking as if you were talking to Matthew. My relationship with Sam will be sustainable? No, because I simply violated his self worth to prove a point. There's no attitude of respect and courtesy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. When I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you for a great blessing. I honor you. At 
once, some will love me and some will reward me by increasing my self worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something there. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor. Are you learning something? Never you sub your subordinates to prove that you are mighty. You are a fool. Transfer honor to them. Some of them will be rebellious, but it's a law that cannot be broken. The honor will return to you. A hundredfold. If God speak it to us, the mentality of courtesy. Ladies, one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny. You have fasted for it for a few days. But your attitude, no courtesy. You give a gentleman something. Not even give him with 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 courtesy. Help me with that handkerchief. Eh, take hello. What are you even saying again? Take it. And whereas this guy has been looking from afar. Oh Lord, why God? Why not? And immediately he sees that nonsense. He plots the graph and says, No, this is not what God showed. And he turns back. Are you anointed? Yes. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. But it has stopped the door. Am I speaking to us? Some of us, our attitude of being rude, rude to people. God is, I make it as a point of duty. I make it as a point of duty as much as possible. Even when I am rebuking people, they know that in that rebuke, I love them. I sent a text to the leaders that the process to me of today. I appreciate it, all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence. I'm still going to tell them again during the early days because I love them. I honor the leaders in this ministry. I respect the grace of God upon their life. And I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens when you come outside, you must find some chance. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and say, you stand there. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rock. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And never said I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Let's learn it. Courtesy. Learn to be cautious. Learn to treat people with honor and respect. Greet people. Greet people. Say this person, when I was in SS3, was please leave all these things. Greet people. Obega, how are you? How are you? When I came in, I saw things. I came in a nice room. And I just come and say, I'm the Lord. Say, I receive grace to honor men. Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow. Because you are trying to respond to the pain There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves because of that mutual respect. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, ah, says something that I like, I will find something to reciprocate. And so you become a friend of everybody. When people are suffering from complex, they run to you. Because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome. You have an atmosphere. When I finish going on here, I've been, I've been tired since morning. But I have to stand here at least. The people are joining a line that is already embarrassing to me. Because I know some of the people standing in that line. It's not like they are so helpless people. But they want themselves at this time. And to be able to do that, I give them a hug. I talk to them with courtesy. 
all our little children that come to work here, I honor them. That's why immediately after service, they come around. You, the little children sit near you. As they are sharing the grace, they are running away from you. Something about your life is driving them. That's how a business partner will look at you and say, you don't have a skill.
if somebody meets somebody and says, Benga, I'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies. Don't try me. Me, God knows. We, no, 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 no. You can do nothing against the truth. The truth was buried after three days. It resurrected. You can't hide truth for long. No, sir. No, sir. Keep your sacrifice endure. I'm giving you a mindset. Realize that success does not come on a platter of gold. The favor of God does not take away the need for endurance. You will endure hardship. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will endure hardship. To be prosperous financially, you will make sacrifices. You will make mistakes. You will learn a lot. To grow in ministry, you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain, sweat, and blood. I know my message is not attractive, but this is what will make you uncomfortable. Endurance. Endurance. Endure hardship. As a faithful soldier of Christ, you went to win souls, nothing happened. You went for that meeting, you thought the power of God would move, nothing happened. And you seem to live in shame. Don't worry. Keep trusting. Keep praying. I know you went and it looked like they jailed you. You went to sing and you lost your key, you lost your voice, you embarrassed. Don't worry. Let them keep laughing. Don't be under pressure to do anything. And say, no, it's, I can sing. Go, what happened? That day is I had kata. Forget about all those explanations. Kata, oh no, kata, continue. A day will come. You will be noted for persistence. And your critics will become the advocates of your need. When you endure, if you give up, you make the prophecy of your critics true. You make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. God is speaking to someone who are rounding up. That all you need is to keep doing what you are doing. I know they are talking about you at home. Your prayer life has brought a lot of persecution, but endure. Keep praying. Sister, they've told you you will marry the Holy Spirit. No problem. Keep praying. They've called you Mother Mary, and now you are ashamed. You cannot even hold your Bible again. Endure. Listen, it's an irrefutable law of greatness. An irrefutable law. I thank God today for the sacrifices of endurance. I thank God for the times when I did not give up in my life. Today, it has translated to the salvation of millions, the transformation of lives. Seated here right now, listening to me, are people who need to endure. I know you have been taught that if it is of God, it must come cheap and easy. No, sir. There is a system in the kingdom where men pass through the cross to get the crown. This is a very deep teaching. You must endure. We are going to pray. Oh, I will endure. No matter what it will take, I will endure. As you are sitting down right now, there may not be one line right in your pocket, but endure. Keep tighty. Some of you, aside from boss, you may trek home. Some of you, you go and receive as old as you are, you still receive all kinds of pity from your elderly ones. Endure. And you see the hand of God upon your life. Endure. Who is God speaking to? Some of you are spilling over and it looks bad. But God is speaking to you tonight. Endure. Don't worry. It looks like one year is a long time. Two years is a long time. But don't worry. Like the twinkling of an eye, you will come out. But as you are coming out, you will not just come out and graduate. What would take your colleagues 10 years you have learned? So one giant leap in destiny you will cover up. But for now, endure. Endure. You don't have suit to wear. Don't be under pressure to do anything. Endure. It's God speaking to us. I choose to endure. This is how this ministry came. To see what God is doing today. And to see where he brought us. And to see where he's taking us. Endurance. Endure the mockery. Endure the shame. Never be under pressure to prove yourself. At every given point in your life. Those who love you outweigh those who hate you. 
don't because of the five or six people that hate you you throw away the honor of millions of people in your life if 30 people hate Sam two million people love him respect their love and don't turn to 10 or 16 people and try to be under the pressure of this are you hearing what I'm saying at every point in your life those who are for you are greater than those who are against you rise up on your feet as a man thinketh your mental composition endure you are in that department it looks like you will die it will not kill you you are not the first to graduate from there endure hardship endure the mockery you will be misunderstood you are being nice to brothers sometimes you cook for them they've called you desperate endure don't worry a day will come his honor will come upon your life lift your voice and thank the lord for the word tonight pray the mental composition that makes you victorious the mental composition i give you a guarantee with the integrity of god backed up it will make you exceptional it will make you notable Are you praying, Koinonia? Hallelujah. I like you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, I bring my mindset under the Lordship of Christ that every mentality in me. That is making me think in a way that is inconsistent with the patterns of greatness. I take authority over it. Lift your voice and pray. Koinonia, are you praying tonight? I pull down strongholds. I cast down imaginations. Guard your heart with all diligence. It is the key to your prosperity. Your mindset is the key to the increase in the anointing. It's the key to the Holy Spirit doing mighty things in your life. The key to you being a champion. The key to you breaking cultural barriers. The key to you being mighty. I don't care where you are now. I don't care what is wrong now. Endure. Be strong. Be strong. Hold on. Be strong. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. The name of the mindset I want you to have is called the mind of Christ. The resultant effect of this transformation is called the mind of Christ. Then you become an envoy. Then you master life. Then you become a champion. Men honor you as if you charm them. Everywhere you go, you are a magnet. And people are saying, what? I'm giving you the mental requirements of an exceptional life. Please give us Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Oh Lord, I pray that your people will listen. Permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the word let there is permit allow it God is saying change I want to make you mighty you came from Kogi state I know there is witchcraft but can you adjust your mind and see a champion that I will make out of you I know you are weak the whole family stays in one room but can you make that shift in your mind let this mind be in you let this mind be in you koinonia let this mind be in you upgrade your mindset don't let culture cheat you don't let your past treat you hallelujah 
I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I reject inferiority and low self-esteem. You have made me great. I'm not cheap. I'm not a local champion. I stop trying to do things. Pray, pray, pray. I stop trying to do things to prove a point. I stop trying to borrow money to look rich. I stop trying to tell lies to look like I'm making progress. I reject a life of falsehood. I move gradually, gradually, level by level. Pray. I reject low self-esteem. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. No culture, no CGPA, no financial level, no challenge will ever make me feel bad. Job or lack of job, admission or lack of admission, marriage or lack of marriage, let it never get to you and make you feel inferior. Pray, Satan the Lord rebuke you. I refuse to feel inferior. The favor of the Lord. The favor of the Lord. A champion on my way to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this prayer point, I'd like you to pray with all your heart. Say, Lord, my mouth has brought too much trouble in my life. It will not continue like this. I set a guard over my mouth. I have gossiped my way to trouble. I have lied my way to trouble. I have, I have joined the heads of people and friends. I've done a lot of things that have destroyed people. Go ahead and pray. I offer my mouth, my tongue, my lips. From today, it becomes an object of blessing. An instrument of lifting. Pray. I had character and a healthy mindset to my anointing. I speak aright. I speak only when I need to. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. May I not destroy my friends with my words. May I not destroy my destiny helpers. May I not drive away my instruments of breakthrough may i not scatter my family with my words may i not destroy ministry may i not destroy my academics may i not destroy my anointing with bad words or cultured words hallelujah hallelujah number three we're going to pray Say, Lord, from today, I have respect and honor for all men, regardless of who they are, regardless of who their parents are. Grant me grace to demonstrate genuine respect and honor for people, those higher than me, my contemporaries, and even those lower than me. Lift your voice and cry to God. I repent of my rude nature. I repent of my pride and arrogance. Lord, I receive grace. May courtesy open doors of access to me. May honor open doors of access to me. Are you praying? Put a guard, oh God, on my lips. I want to be exceptional. 
I want to be exceptional. I want to shorten the journey to my destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, hold hands around we are going to pray. Because you will need grace to fulfill this. You are going to pray and say, Lord, over what you have called me to do, I will endure. Over the preparation, I'm in the school of the Spirit. It does not yet appear, but I will endure. Lord, men are mocking me, but I will endure. My finances are mocking me. My lack of marriage, my lack of childbirth is mocking me, but I will endure. Lift your voice and pray. A supply of grace. A supply of grace. I refuse to be under pressure. Pray. Pray. Grace. 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 To continue in the midst of harsh conditions. Grace. To continue in the midst of persecution. Grace. To continue. That ministry must not die. That anointing must not die. That business must not die. That job seeking must not end. I endure to the end. I endure to the end. There's no food now, but I endure. I don't have friends now, but I endure. Hallelujah. Matthew 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases. Listen, please. Diverse diseases and torments, and those who were possessed or oppressed with demons, and those who had epilepsy, and those who had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from the Capolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and beyond the Jordan. There are many of us who have come from different parts of this city and different states in this country. The Bible says when they all came to Jesus, not to a man of God, he healed them all. I want you to know that the Lord Jesus is in this place. The Lord Jesus Christ is in this place. And by the grace of God, God has given us an anointing. He says, Son of man, prophesy to the tribunals. When he prophesied, he didn't say, Hear ye the word of Ezekiel. He said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the one who sent me to prophesy. So tonight you will hear the word of the Lord. And faith comes by hearing. Listen to me, please. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. The hearing comes by the word of God. When you hear the word of God, you get up and you take action. Until you have taken action, you have not taken any step of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Faith is just is not just about confession. Faith is about taking action. Every time you do not take action, it is time that you are still doubting. Is that true? Bishop Oedi was dead. If it is truly the word of God, if it is faith, it will move you into action. If that word does not move you into action, hallelujah, then it means it was not faith. So you cannot move your leg 
and the word of God comes, you receive it. Prove that you have received it by taking action. And Peter held on to his hands and lifted him, and the man leaping stood. His bones and ankles became strength. Take away your eyes from whatever problems. Please, if you've not written your prayer request while you're sitting down, just write it quickly. You have to be very brief this night. Be out of here. Praise the Lord. So I want you to believe that you are in the presence of the living God. God will not bring you to waste your time. Realize that it is within His ability to heal you. Do you believe that? It is within His ability to change your story. It is within His ability to anoint you. There are many of us who have stayed at certain levels of grace for a long time. It's time to move. The Bible says, He has carried around this mountain long enough, turn ye not once. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you desire, the Bible says, and whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou will have it. So tonight, you are the one that knows the problem. Don't wait for your neighbor to receive you. As the word of the Lord begins to come, don't wait until your case is called. The calling of the cases of people is just sign, a sign and a wonder. The Bible says Jesus was in the room teaching and the power of God was present. Just like the glory and the power of God is present this night. To heal, to deliver. There are many of you who have been oppressed by all kinds of demonic spirits. You want to move forward. There are strongholds keeping you down. There are strongholds. Hear me, please. Keeping many families down. You do everything you know to do. And there's no advancement. Everybody, every lady in the family, no marriage. Pretty lady, no marriage. It's not like you live a promiscuous life. That devil will bow this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, no job. Everybody in your family. You went to school, suffered for years, nothing to show forth for it. Acts 10 38. Is that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power? The Bible says he went about doing good and healing. It is the days who were sick, healing all days that were oppressed. Sickness is an oppression. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That terminal disease is an oppression. Tonight, don't give excuse for anything. It's not your sickness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not your HIV. Yes, you have medical reports. But whose report will you believe tonight? That's the question. Whose report will you believe? Make up your mind. Some of you, they have concluded about you. As you are here right now, scattered in this crowd, inside and outside. There are many of you, everybody has concluded about you. They said, just forget this guy or forget this lady. The person is a useless person. But the Bible says there is hope for a tree, even if it be cut down. At the scent of water. Let me tell you something. Many of you, because of certain things you have done, like Samson, your hair has been cut. This is the place tonight that that hair will grow back. He said, Rejoice not over me, my enemies, for though I fall, yet will I rise again. Are you listening to me? This is the place the Bible says, Son of man, what yes thou? It's the four horns. These horns that have lifted up themselves so that no one will lift up his head in Judah. He said, but I will send carpenters. Carpenters. Hallelujah. There are many of you pronouncements and ordinances of wicked men have been decreed over your family that nothing good will come out of your life and nothing good will come out of your family. The Bible says, who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not decreed? 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of us victims of all kinds of satanic assaults, ordinances and covenants of darkness that have been entered, and many of us are suffering things we have no idea of. But the Bible says the children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. Tonight, God will visit you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God will visit you. As some of you here, you are tired, struggling, like my brother said, with all kinds of habits. You are a man of God, great man of God. But pornography will not leave your life. You have, you have fasted, you have prayed. As you are fasting, the devil is still mocking you. Hallelujah. You are still fasting. You are breaking the fast with sleeping with somebody. You have, it's not like you are bad. That devil is a liar this night. Because the hand of the Lord will be strong upon you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, everything you lay your hands to do doesn't work. It will keep working for others till it gets to your tongue. Make sure as you are receiving tonight, hear me, every one of us is representing at least a family. Are you listening to me? He said, as for me and my house, they did call all of them one by one. Somebody stood in the gap. As for me, that terminal disease eating your father or your mother, he can bow this night. The Bible says, Wherefore God has so highly exalted him. He said, And given him a name that is above every other name. That at the mention of that name, what will happen? How many needs? How many needs? Help me. How many needs? HIV, cancer. Every knee must bow. The knee that will not bow this night has not been created. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, Blotting out every handwriting. Question. Where was the handwriting written? There are handwriting, ordinances of darkness. Nothing happens to you until you get to a certain age. Suddenly, some things begin to happen. Some of you, as you are sitting, looking at me and hearing me outside, you are being molested by all kinds of things. You are sleeping in the night, all kinds of devilish things oppressing you. You are afraid. Nobody knows. See, this night, let me tell you, just humble yourself and open up your spirit. Are you hearing me? Keep your whatever it is and say, Lord, do something in my life this night. Hallelujah. Demonic things. The devil and his assholes joining the heads of people. Playing with people's destinies. There are many of you, you and your, you know this, you and your, you are perpetually living under a closed heaven. But this is why the Lord brought you tonight. The name Miracle Service, we would have called it Worship Service. Miracle Service was given by God. Are you hearing me? It was just, it was not just a name that was formulated. It's a miracle service. And your faith, your faith is that connecting pipe to the power of God. Kenny said something, was it Kenny or, or, or Pastor Jason that said something? Very powerful. He said, make sure that this night you are not watching other people. Some of you like watching other people. Some of you even came because of what you had. Some of you are critics. You just came to verify a lot of things. Some of you came with a sincere desire. Some of you came sluggishly because you like a lady. I just say, I'm going for Koinonia. I say, talk. Love does everything. Let me tell you something. Redefine your priority this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you are coming as usual. Some of you are coming because you are workers. It's the heat that comment unto him must be. First that he exists. And then that is the rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. I came here with an open heart. I began to tell the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm the first person. The Bible says, the husband man shall be the first partaker. And so I told the Lord, before you begin to touch the people, I'm not being selfish. Hallelujah. Don't stand watching people. 
and say, why are they praying like this? Why are they jumping like this and celebrating God? You can get up, we will share the grace and you will go back. You will be watching. This is, this is the reason why a lot of people think miracles are fake because they have never gotten one. Every time people are open, say, how can a beautiful sister like this be rolling on the ground praying and say, God, visit me. You are carrying your dignified self and God will pass you and touch somebody. And then at the end of it, you see people celebrating miracles and breakthroughs. Testimony is coming and you say it's not true. Why is it that there are only specific people? This thing is Hispanic. If you open up your heart, that's what God told Cain. Cain was complaining why Abel was receiving breakthroughs and he was not receiving. God said, if you do what Cain did, will your sacrifice not be accepted? Participate in the meeting this night. Follow instructions diligently. When they say lift up your hands and say amen, don't say please, please lifting up of hands. This is the problem. Say my story must change this night. Say it from your heart. My story must change this night. Say, Lord, I know you are alive. I know you are powerful. I know you are able to visit my life, visit the works of my hands. Visit my health, visit my family. And this night, I place a demand by faith that I will truly receive. Can I tell you something? If your heart is not open to receive, it's better to go home. You can do something meaningful with your time. You can go and read the Bible or do something else. What I advise you this night, don't be among the spectators. If you don't have an expectation, cheerfully think about it. There's no crime not having one. But get one. So that you are not in confusion. The Bible said, give us this day our... It is a give us this day what we need. That's too ambiguous. Give us when? Specific time, specific need. Our what? That's what you wanted. Daily bread. So Lord, give me this day, this change of your time. Give me this day a change of results. Give me this day a story. Lift my head, oh God. Let somebody know that a giant can arise from your family. There are some of you like Gideon. You are, your family is the least. And you are the least in your family. And you are busy hiding. This night the Lord is speaking to you. What are you doing on the ground, oh mighty man of valor? Do you not know who you are in Christ? Redemption offers us an opportunity to rise and reign like kings. Are you hearing me? He said, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. Awake. As that reign of glory comes. Some of you, what you need tonight is an upgrade of grace. The grace you have is there, but you have gotten to the limit of it. There are certain dimensions. Hear me, let me tell you something. The grace is in levels. The Bible says he measured a thousand cubits. Is that true? Measured another thousand cubits. Doors will open to you according to the degree of grace. Let me tell you the truth. It's not everything that is possible for everybody. Are you hearing me? I told you we are all equal in Christ, but we are not equal in grace. The prophet's servant took the rod. The same rod went and laid it on the dead body. Nothing happened. Is that true? But the prophet came and did it. See, that it is not possible for you does not mean it's not possible in Christ. But tonight, Jesus himself, the Bible says, and if I be lifted up, tonight we have exalted him with all the worship. Christ is lifted up. You cannot come to his presence and those chains and shackles. And they bound something. Some of us have been bound by limitations, by mindset. The Bible says, but the hand of the Lord came upon something. And that rope became like wax. Like wax. Many of you will shake out of some things this night. Some of you have been thrown into the den of the lion. And people have forgotten about you. But can I tell you something? 
your enemies will call your name and you will answer you will say i'm alive i got into that dungeon but before then that sakina of god that preserves men you will come out strong come out wise come out powerful come out full of grace and tell them i have a testimony i know what it means to go to the valley of the shadow of death but god who can take a man from a don't heal the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon tonight many of you will activate breakthroughs god will connect you let me tell you something listen to me the holy ghost gave me a revelation some time ago he said god is called the father of spirit have you ever known the meaning of that name that means every spirit is subject to him when the disciples came in luke in the book of luke they said they came rejoicing saying master even the demons were subject to us through thy name and jesus said do not just rejoice because the spirit so he's called the father are you listening to me the chief the captain above every spirit including the spirit of your destiny help us and so if the father of spirits moves he can move any spirit jeremy the bible says nebuchadnezzar did not sleep that night he got up by himself he said oh daniel has your god been able to save you may my god reveal himself as the father of spirits over certain families the father of spirits every spirit listen have a list understand this principle they can enter their covenant there's what they call summoning the spirits of people is that true while they are sleeping they summon your spirit and the spirit of the person comes to the cover they are trying to mimic god god is the lion satan roars like the lion tonight god will summon the spirits of men let me tell you the truth and compel them to bless you Hallelujah. He said, Look up to Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear thee. For I called him out alone. I blessed him and I increased him. I called him alone. This night is not you and your neighbor. I know you are going out together. Just leave that thing for a while now. Are you hearing me? It's not the issue of me and my neighbor or me and my family members. Oh, oh this guy is our neighbor in New Extension. Forget about that thing. I know mother came with father. But forget about that thing and say, Lord, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I will not let you go until something in my spirit breaks open. I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I'm provoking you to get angry tonight. Because what you are about to lift, listen. When you watch weightlifters as they lift weights, before they lift it, you see them shouting. They are getting themselves angry. Well, because when they are angry, an ability they cannot explain comes. This is what I'm doing to you. When I fire your face, every unbelief that came with your situation, I know you tried from town to come here, but can I tell you something? God is able to change the story of a man. Tonight, let's see that demonic report that says you will not bear a child. Let's see that demonic report that says you have fibroid and that you will be pregnant. Let me tell you the truth. My Bible tells me God opened the womb of Leah. God opened the womb of Rachel. It is God that opens a door that no devil can shut. And he can shut a door that no devil can open. Revelation 3 verse 8 He said, Behold, I know that you have little strength Yet you have kept my word He said, Behold, I set before you I set before you Hallelujah We had a very touching testimony Over the week 
of the favor of God. Hallelujah. Someone called us and a very professional web designer from Gombe State is the one that he designed for state government their website. And he just called us. He said Koinonia messages have been blessing him, opening him to dimensions in the spirit. He said he has been stepping into new levels in his career. And he said, please, I want to transport myself, foot my bills, lodge myself, and come and build a free website for the ministry. And I want to train the media team on how to maintain it, everything free of charge. How can you explain this? See, listen, listen. I don't say this thing. See, let me tell you something. We tell testimonies because the testimony of Jesus, that means a testimony that was initiated by the Spirit of the Christ, is a spirit of prophecy, meaning it has in itself the ability to compel you to desire it and see it happen in your life. Hallelujah. The testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy. Don't sit down there and say, can it happen? You are saying what God, you cannot belong to a ministry that is carrying certain levels of grace and is not working in your life. Get angry this night. Get angry. He said, I and all the children that the Lord has given me, get angry. When they saw the apostle, they said he had been with Jesus. Let me tell you this night. Don't you ever hear me? Don't you just leave me? Leave me. Don't you ever? Are you hearing me? Try to make Satan make you think there is no hope. That language of there is no hope is of the devil. Some of you are outside. Hear my voice. Because there are many voices speaking. There are some voices telling you you will never marry. Ladies, hear me. Some are saying because you live a past life. Look at how it is in your house. What is your business? With what has happened to Mr. ABC. The Bible says, A thousand shall fall by your side. Is that true? They fell near you. He said, Another ten thousand by your right side. He said, None shall harm you. Some of you hear me. This night, I'm serious about this marriage thing. We are going to break this devilish joke. Some of you have been laughing about it. If you don't take it serious this night, you will be surprised. You are just saying, I'm fine, I'm fine. Don't get up and deal with it this night. The Bible says, The whole world lieth in wickedness. Don't let cartoons fool you. This world is not a playground. Are you hearing me? So when it's time to receive, make sure you receive. The Lord is going to be restoring in this place. You lived a past life. You lost your womb. Who told you God has stopped creating? Read the book of Revelation. It says, For thou was slain, and you have received what it is that you have created. It said they, they are and were created. They were created and are still being created. God did not stop creation, He only rested on the seventh day. When he rested on the seventh day, there was no need for recreation. When man spoiled things, he sent Jesus back. Let me tell you something. Remember not the former things. Are you hearing me? Tonight, don't let the devil say, even you, even you, that everybody knows you in your area to be a prostitute. So what? See, this is why when they came to the land of Jericho, because of the prophetic destiny, are you hearing me, of Rahab, he said, kill everything plus the animals so that there will be no trace to our history because she was going to be the great grandmother of Jesus. He said, destroy everything of the past. Tonight, let me tell you something. Everything, whether your mistakes, whether your carelessness of the past, the Bible says, remember not the former things. How many of us are ready to receive tonight? Let me give you a few seconds right now. I'd like you to think on the things you want God to do for you. Please, don't be mechanical about this. We are not doing jamboree this night. Think very well. Know what you want God to do. If it's husband, say husband. Don't say a man. 
If it's wife, say wife. If it's breakthrough, say Lord, my heavens has taught. If it's finances, say finances. If it's your ministry that is dying, no clothes, say, Oh God, make so a thousand cubits this night. Any area of your life, terminal disease, infection, lump in your breast, cancer, whatever it is, just believe God. Don't say we have been coming. I came the last time I didn't receive. Master, we have told all night, they said. He said, nevertheless, this night, I thy word. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and pray in tongues just for one minute. Exercise your spirit, man. Outside. I'm telling you, I see a cloud outside. A mighty cloud. A mighty cloud. The Lord is showing me a still free cloud outside. God will do mighty things outside. Pray in one minute. Cry out your expectation to God. Go ahead. Forget about your neighbor. Talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, you know that you are my last hope this night. You are my last hope in this place. If you do not help me, there is no help again. If you do not save my family, if you don't change our story, then let it be that there is no God. But I have no option again. Pray that demon spirit assaulting your destiny. Pray enough is enough. That yoke of bad luck. Pray Christ has redeemed you by death tonight. You will enter into the experience. Christ has paid the price. You don't need to pay it again. But it takes faith to enforce that which Christ has done. The price has been paid. It will not be paid this night. That ultimate price. Yes, Lord. Not just a song. Listen to what you are saying. Listen to what you are saying. your hands everybody inside and outside I truly hail you most high I hail you most high I truly hail hail you 
Hallelujah. Hear me. The power of God is present in this place, mighty. And God is going to be fishing out people and families. Hear me. Some of you will stand in for your family. Every yoke of darkness, every curse, every the power of God is already moving. Every curse outside, I want you to get ready because there will be a release of fire. Hallelujah. At the count of three, hear me. Inside and outside. At the count of three, with all your heart, you're going to shout Jesus. Hear me? The fire of the Holy Ghost is going to be moving in this place in a dramatic way. Especially outside, there will be mighty deliverances for you, for your family members. Every oppressor, it will bow tonight. Because upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Lift up your hands. Thank you, Father. Take over this meeting right now, Holy Spirit. Take over this meeting. Take over this meeting. Do mighty things. I give you all the glory. At the count of three, hear me. I confront death. I confront powers. In the name that is above all names. Out of the abundance of grace that is sufficient in this house at the count of three every devil I speak from the realm of the spirit and I confront altars by the fire of the Holy Ghost you will bow at the count of three one two three shout Jesus take 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 that devil of darkness come out God's people go free outside the fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Bring them out. Every act of witchcraft. Every act of divination, every act of sorcery, let the fire fall. I expose every power of darkness right now, right now, right now, outside, outside. There are angels of deliverance in a mighty way. Bring them out. Oh, there is fire in this place. No devil can stand. No devil against your destiny. No enchantment. No divination against Jacob. Shall stand. Surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, this night they will scatter. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands again. Outside. Hallelujah. Hear me. Those of you outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. God is not done with you. Please, pick them and bring them. 
Many of it will be a mass deliverance. Are you hearing me? Just those outside. Right now at the count of three. One, two, three. Is the name above all names. Yokes are breaking. Spells are breaking. Yokes are breaking. Yokes are breaking. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The baptism of fire. And the no devil will stand where in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yummy. Yummy. Some of you are receiving liberty. You don't have to fall and come out. Are you hearing me? But they are just living. Living. See, some of you, be checking. We have not prayed for the sick yet. But be checking yourself. You will find out that miracles are already happening. Because some of these sicknesses are orchestrated by devils. Now, Hear me, the Lord Jesus Christ is in this place. At the count of three, I speak to all these demons that have oppressed these people as a point of contact. I speak as an ambassador. At the count of three, you will leave them complete deliverance. No hiding. Let the word of God start even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit. There be no hiding place. At the count of three, under this apostolic fire, at the count of three, you will go right now. One, two, three, go, 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 come out, come out, come out, and return no more, come out. Come out, come out, and return no more. Come out. 
Come out. There's no hiding place. Come out. There's fire upon every devil. Fire. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. There's no hiding place. Listen, as this is happening to you, I want you to know that this is happening in your family too. Are you hearing me? This is the spirit of death in this brother's family. The spirit of death. Right now, thou foul devil, I see you in the spirit. Go, go, come out now. Come out now. Out. Hallelujah. Let me pray for this lady. See, I'm seeing horns. Horns. This is what I'm seeing. That devil is a liar. Right now, I make contact with your body by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. You're a wicked, foul devil of darkness. Just lay your hands on her head. In the name of Jesus. Now, come out, thou devil of darkness. There's no hiding for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, this curse of darkness is gone from this lady. Hallelujah. Ulster, if you have ulster, lift your hands, anybody. Ulster, please, you're going to be healed now. Check yourself. Hallelujah. Now we'll take some instant testimonies. Hallelujah. We'll take some instant testimonies. Because of time, we usually don't do that. But we we'll just to encourage a few people. Lift your hands inside and outside. You're suffering from peptic ulcer. It will go now. Peptic ulcer. Lift your hands as I rebuke that spirit. Some of you have wounds. Those wounds will close up now. Now, not later on. Just leave them. God is not done with them until He's done. Brother, look at me. You are a great man, but let me tell you, you didn't come out for yourself. You came out for your family. Where are you from? Uh, not where you are coming from. At those states. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is showing me a shrine with several stones and there's cola not in the middle. Are you listening to me? So God is setting you free. You believe that? Let me pray for you for your family. Out now! Those altars of darkness gone forever. Please don't be quick to carry them. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, altars, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That name that is above every other name. Ulcers be healed now. Ulcers be healed now. Ulcers inside and outside be healed now. Start checking yourself. Check yourself. Miracles are happening. God is healing ulcer. Ulcer. Check. Check. The moment you see a notable miracle, um, maybe we'll have a few, I don't know, maybe at the back, one or two people. The ministers who verify them will take one or two testimonies. The Lord is going, who is Hanatu? Hanatu, Hanatu. I'm hearing the name Hanatu. Come now, don't wait there, please. There's no time. Hanatu. Hanatu. God is visiting the family of Hanatu. You are Hanatu. Your name is Han you. Look at me. God is visiting your family. Are you hearing me? A devil of darkness. Spell and yokes the bondage. Let our family go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is not just delivering the family. God is anointing this young man. God will do mighty things. Take the anointing. You will become a mighty man of God. Mighty man of God. Hallelujah. 
Sister, this lady, come please. Quickly. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. I'm hearing the name Grace. Look at me. Who is Grace? I'm hearing the name Grace. Your friend. Your church member. We need to pray for Grace because death wants to take her life. Are you hearing me? Grace, that's I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is coming. But then the Lord is going to twist it in three things. See, listen to me. Number one, I, the Lord always shows me these things because I'm seeing marital issue. You married? Do you know me? Have I met with you? The Lord wants to solve that issue right now because you're looking pretty on the outside. Are you hearing me? But I'm still shadow. That's the only thing I'm seeing as for in the spirit. There is no form, just shadow. But the Lord is going to set you free. Number two. Who is doing a building project? A building. Did you tell me this is the second thing God is going to do? Supernatural grace to complete the building project. Are you listening to me? Number three, God is blessing in the area of business. I'm hearing business. Who does business? Are you sure? You don't just say yes, so are you very sure? Okay. You are going to see an escalation in your business. Three this three things. Hold my hand. Father, that yoke of bondage, I break out free from it right now. Ah, what is this thing that I'm seeing? Do you know what I'm seeing? I'm not seeing a woman, I'm seeing a man. See, don't feel embarrassed. Who comes to oppress you in the night? You have those kind of experiences. This is the man I'm seeing. That devil is a liar. Are you here? Let her go. She must be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is what is stopping this marriage. I said to you, you will experience the hand of God, the grace of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Petrus, your son name is Petrus. Your son name is Petrus. Petrus, your son name is Petrus. Please, let's hurry up. Your son's name is Petrus. When you have that person, please let him come out. Hallelujah. Now, if you have problem with your ears, please, we have to be fast. Ears, whether one side, or if you came with anybody inside and outside, you came with anybody that is partially or completely deaf, please put your hands here right now. Put your hands right here. Some of you feel like water in your ears. Just put your hands. Please. As you are receiving miracles, some of you are not mentioning your case. Just walk out. Bishop Stan and Pastor Jakes are outside. Take the courage to walk out now. Go and drop your testimony. Hallelujah. We are going to take one or two of them. The ministers are at the back. Hallelujah. They are standing. Even if the miracle has started, they will perfect it. Look at me. Come. See. Brother, come. Where were you sitting? Outside. At the back. Hold on. What happened to you? What happened? What happened? That's the question. The Lord Jesus, because even now God has not finished one of the things. God is calling you. It will be a time of preparation. But God is calling you. You're going to be a great teacher. Look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. Spirit of revelation. My God, I pray. The eye is the light of the body. Let something happen to this brother. Let there be a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. I impart upon you. Just look at my eyes. There is even a mighty impartation. Hallelujah. Please go outside. God is visiting people. I'm seeing some, someone healed. Lump in the breast. Lump in the breast is getting healed right now. 
right now the moment it is your case celebrate god check it and go out celebrate it there's nothing to be ashamed of this is this is a outside a lady is killed lump in the breast your right breast outside there's healing going on right now a lump in the breast outside a lady is being killed lump in the breast is going hallelujah now blood disease blood disease i want to pray for blood disease whether hepatitis hepatitis is killing people like chickens right now whether it is hepatitis hiv aside from genotypes we'll pray for genotypes differently hallelujah but any other blood disease please lift your hands quickly quickly please lift your hands want to rebuke that devil thank you jesus thank you jesus if you are lifting your hands lift it because the power of god will come upon you right now in the name of jesus i pray blood disease be healed be healed right now inside and outside be healed HIV virus die now in the name of Jesus sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia die right now please can we get another mic hallelujah okay let's just take one right now she's lost her voice hallelujah because god healed her wife standing outside the moment man of god said that people would alter god is touching them right now god touched and she was healed she began to shout and she's lost her voice hallelujah can you shout for us praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord Please, as more miracles are happening, don't just come out here to testify, please. Now, I want to pray for a woman. You came, you have pain. It's, it's an elderly woman. Something, I don't know if it's a growth or something. Please, who is that? Please, and please, let's save time. God is healing people right now. And then I'm seeing, watch this, this part. You're feeling, sometimes you walk and it's almost like you want to fall. Your bone here, come out, you're a lady. You are a lady, God is showing me, the lady is holding a baby. This is what I'm saying. You are holding a baby. Whether it's your child, who is that, please? Holding a baby, oh. You are holding a baby. Where is the baby? Was she holding a baby? Because, come. Open. Such Lord gates of heaven. Where, where is the baby? This is the baby. This is the baby. Come, madam, you will be healed right now. Look at me. You, you can see her limping. Who can see her limping? Can you see her limping? Can you see her limping? Madam, hold my hands. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lay your hands on her. Which of them? Which of them? Where is the pain? What happened? Just like that, that devil will kill you right now. Because there is a name. Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen. Come. March your legs. Go ahead. Go ahead. March. Look at look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Is there any pain? Are you feeling any pain? Just a little. Go ahead. Just march in the name of Jesus Christ. Now check it. Walk. Walk and come. Walk and come. Jump. Look at. Look at this. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Open the heavens. Hey,
talking to me. Just leave her. Five months, you are a lady here. You have not seen your period for five months. Five months, you have not seen your period. You shared it with a few friends. Right now, this night, this night, I know there are lady ushers, they will help you. Hallelujah. All kinds of menstrual issues, it will disappear. It will disappear right now. Open the floodgates of heaven. As soon as I pray for you, take her to the restroom. You will check yourself right now. Right now, that is your abundance. Be free now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. There's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Please take her. Please take her so she doesn't feel embarrassed. She's not the only one. There will be miracles. There are more miracles coming. Celebrate Jesus Christ. Please, can we have another mic? So that Pastor Jake, is there another mic? Okay, it's there. Please, just go to the back. Go to the back. Yes. Hallelujah. His brother's name is Dennis. 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 And while standing here, when the man of God said, to lift up our hands, and those that had ulcers, to lift up your hands. God is healing ulcer. He actually had ulcer and he translated into asthma. Hallelujah. And while he lifted up his hands, what happened? Praise the Lord. This is my first time to come here and it leads to asthmatic. Hallelujah. As a man of God, it's like if you have asthma, if you have ulcer, and I believe it's going to, it's going to be healed. And as I lift up my hand, I'm having chest, chest pain. Hallelujah. But now I'm not feeling really anything. Just as cool as. Breathe, as breathe as in and out. Breathe in and out. Go ahead. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. In and out, any problem, celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. My grain headache has just been healed. My grain headache has been healed now. My grain headache, please check yourself. My grain headache, my grain headache has been healed. Make sure you just rush down to the back. My grain headache, thank you, Jesus Christ. My grain headache has been healed. Now, please listen. There's someone you wake up in the morning, your heart area here, your heart area pains you. It's as if your heart is scaring when you wake up early in the morning. This thing has been happening for a long time. Who is that person? Your heart, just, just this. You cannot even sleep on that side because when you rest on that side, you have serious problems. This is not the only one. I'm still a lady. You're a young lady. You're a young lady. Was she on the side? Who brought her? Mama? Papa, none of them are not in it. Okay. Selena is the official house interpreter. Ask her what's wrong. Thank you, Dad. Her hand and her legs. Her hand. Everything. This is thing. The devil wants is supposed to be from my head down. This is stroke. Are you saying this is stroke that the devil wants to break? Tell her right now she will, she's going to be healed and she will dance. Miracles, look at the lady who just came. Hallelujah. You need to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While standing here worshipping God, she said she's had menstrual pain for a long, long time. Hallelujah. The pain had been there and while I was to minister to her, something remarkable happened. You want to hear? Hallelujah. Please, we need a lady to touch her stomach. She said because you were pain, so we need somebody to verify. Now the pains are... Yes. The pains are gone? Yes. Any pain? Hallelujah. Please celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Check yourself. Don't just stand waiting. Check yourself. God is doing miracles. Even if you are outside, just Bishop and Pastor Jacks are at the back. Mama, God is going to heal her right now. Ask her, does she believe? Tell her to hold my hands. The Lord Jesus set you free. That devil, gone. Pain, gone. Come up. Tell her to come up and march. It's gone. It's gone. Look at this. It's gone. It's gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. 
Not feeling any pain, Mama. Let's march. Can you dance? Play any song for her. Look at, look at somebody who could not stand well. What kind of song do they sing? You, you people should learn outside songs for our mothers. You could don't know one outside song. Annie, give us one outside song. Outside, a hole in the teeth has been closed. Outside, a hole in the teeth. Check yourself. A hole in the teeth. A hole in the teeth. It has been paining you. Check. You find out it has been done right now. Right now, the Lord is showing me a hole in the teeth is closed. The hole is closed completely. Please make sure you verify before coming. Okay. Okay, repay. Just happen immediately. Praise the Lord. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Please, if you are healed, just walk right at the back. The Lord is showing me another miracle. One eye, the left eye of somebody outside. God is really visiting people outside. The left eye, you don't see well with it. Yes, you see like an image intercepting your eye is gone right now. Please check it. What was it? Okay, lay your hands there. Check yourself. The anointing does not just come. Check yourself. Please don't don't feel embarrassed to say you have to stay here. No. If it doesn't happen, say it. We'll pray for you here. Check yourself. Check yourself very well. Do what you feel. Can you? Any pain? I'm still waiting for the lady. Someone. The, I think. The, did I say left or right now? Breast long. Breast long. It's gone. It's gone. Check it. Don't don't wait. Check check and go outside. Pastor Jakes is there. They are busy verifying people's cases. Inside or outside. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, um, this is very interesting. There's a family here that has been suffering delay. And God is going to solve the problem in a very dramatic way. Wait, 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 wait. The power of God is going to carry the person from where he is. The person will run out here with such speed. This is a sign that this is what God is doing. Hallelujah. 
This is the sign that God gave me. This is very interesting. It's the way the Holy Spirit walks fine and wonders there. From outside, from outside, the power of God will pick the person. He will run with the spirit of Elijah. It's from outside. Lord, let it happen according to your word. I give you praise and I give you glory. You will come out under a tremendous influence of the spirit. It's a sign that this is what God is doing. Please let's continue before the person comes out. You will come out certainly. This is the word of the Lord. Now I'm seeing a baby that is sick. You came with a baby that is sick. Please, who is the person? The baby cries in the night. Please hurry up quickly. Because Pastor Jake will still come up here. Bishop Ah, whatever mountain will not has not answered to you to answer to you this night. Who is this? This is the baby that is sick. What's wrong with her? Open the floodgates of heaven. One more person again, this same experience for one more person outside. One more person outside is going to happen again. One more person by the power and the influence of the spirit. This is a sign and a wonder. God is restoring delaying families. The power of God will just pick you from the crowd and bring you here with tremendous peace. Let's listen. They transfused her and after what did they say is wrong with her? What is the doctor? That what? HIV positive. That devil is a liar. Come, my dear. Look at me. What's her name? How can a girl bear the name Faithful and still have HIV? You see how demonic HIV is? The Bible says a man was sitting at a beautiful gate with an ugly situation. A lady did it like Jabez. But tonight, like the prayer of Jabez, he said, Oh, that thou would have blessed me. Hallelujah. You will go and test her. You will come back with a testimony. We will change it. HIV is a spirit. And it will bow. Sweetheart, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Miracle. I tell you, God is doing wonders in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Apostle, this is amazing. Listen. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. The, the word of knowledge you gave about a woman, the lady outside with the, with the lump. Lump. The lady with the lump. Listen. How, okay, how long has it been? Is there possible? How long? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Look at me. Lift your hands. Lord, let your power come upon her. You will perfect this right now. That which you have started, let it be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amazing. Amazing. I'm telling you, God is doing amazing things. So if your miracle has started, Bishop is praying, Jake, they are praying. We are very serious. Don't go back. Don't go back. A wrist has just been healed. Feel a pain. In fact, there used to be like a growth. Check it, it has disappeared. Check it right now, it has disappeared. Check it, it has disappeared. Check it. God is doing mighty miracles. Check it, it has disappeared. Hallelujah. Now, I'm seeing a woman. 
there are objects that move in your body serious objects it moves sometimes to your legs sometimes to your chest hallelujah right now as i pray you are going to be free and you find out that you are free you are feeling light please when that happens to you go down the ministers are seriously praying here father in the name of jesus this demonic thing this demonic thing this demonic joke of darkness let it leave your body right now right now right now right now come my sister what's your name grace when i was speaking to a lady here and i said grace i was my eyes was being fixed are you married we are going to visit marriage issues now just get ready we are going to deal ruthlessly with that devil are you hearing me marriage is a good thing stay again stay one more time every good and perfect gift where does it come from where does it come from that means every bad and imperfect gift comes from where i tell you the truth god is going to visit marriages right now Look at me. Men don't come to you. Anybody that comes, they just mock you. They run away. They do all of these things. Some even insult you. Can I tell you something? You are wonderfully and fearfully made. I hope you know that God does mighty marriage miracles in this place. So when we are talking about marriage, look at another miracles are happening. Like I tell you, there is an open heaven. And this is what happens once there is praise. Please make sure that the mind is set. Let's take this testimony. Yes, sir. Come, sister. Hallelujah. Apostle, when you gave a word for the woman, you said somebody something was moving. Movements in her body. Exactly. This is the person movement. She had an accident some days ago, and since then she's been having funny movements. Movements in your body. Even standing here in the meeting, she was still having that. Any movement right now in your body. Lay your hands on your on your stomach. No, not on your stomach, not your legs. Give Jesus a big sister. I'm going to pray. look at me. What are you doing? You are a teacher. Yes, Hello, eh? Government secondary school. I'm going to pray for you. Why don't they like you? What is all this thing I'm saying? Do you know me? They will discuss this because I'm still real hatred. They hate this woman. Eh? I'm seeing chalk. Chuck, you are a teacher. What are you teaching? Okay, you school, they teach everything. Okay, let me pray for you. Look at me. That devil is a liar and you should step you down. Do you believe me? Go, a wicked, foul devil of darkness. Let her go now. Let her go. Come out of her right now. Let her go, thou devil of darkness. Release her right now with a mighty shout. Go, go. Now, please, if there is a woman here. You suffered barrenness or a man, anything that you have not given birth, come out here quickly. Please, quickly, quickly. Bishop is still coming and Jake, we have to hurry up. There's a little that will happen here. Please, come out quickly. You, you must be married though, except if you are standing for somebody. Don't be emotional about it, please, please. Be looking at your neighbor. If you are from the same place, go back. Somebody has come to represent another person. We will have miracle children in this place. Look at, look how many people the devil is stopping them from enjoying 
I mean, some of them are standing in for their loved ones. Look at, look at this, look at this. It looks like they are coming out to give offering. But this is, this is lack of, lack of children. You see the relevance of meetings like this? Listen to me. Who is standing for herself or for himself? For yourself. For yourself, come here, please. Quickly. Those who are standing for others, this way. For yourself. Look at me. Are you together? She's your wife. Oh, both of you are standing for yourself. Where's your husband? He traveled. I'm seeing a baby girl. Go and write this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Hold my hand. See, let me tell you. Sister, look at me. You will come back here with your baby girl and testify. You believe that? Lord, confirm your word with power right now. Thank you, Jesus. You are still free. On his marriage, why didn't you wait? The guy just say, Okay, no, 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 don't please don't laugh. It doesn't mean you should do it anyway, but don't laugh. It's coming out. Look at me. You believe that there is supernatural grace for marriage here. Yeah? When when are you when is the wedding? Eh? Hold my hands. According to the time of life, I speak to you under the option of the spirit. Before the end of this month, you will be in a very godly, serious relationship with a serious lady that is virtuous and love God. Father of spirits, connect them. You are the father of spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, mighty miracles again are happening. You do, you, for yourself, lay your hands on your stomach. I'm saying something else. What did the doctor say? Well, we shall know this is not from God, whatever it is. PID, PID, whatever it is. And see, look at me. Wherefore God has no idea exalted him and given him a name. At least the men don't understand, some of them, but the ladies, you understand what this therapy? Do you understand or not? We are going to pray. Look at me. It will go and it will give birth to a lot of children. What will stop you is discipline, not lack of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I wish your husband were here because it's not only you I'm supposed to pray for. Where is he? Thank you, Jesus. Just lay your hands there. Father, perfect hand, the power of God is coming upon you. And that devilish thing is leaving you right now. Return with testimonies. Return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please let's hear Pastor James. Hallelujah. Praise God. Apostle, when you give the word for somebody outside and God was feeling the person's teeth. Feeling the person's teeth. How many of you remember? Two of her teeth. Two of her teeth had been removed. Can you open your mouth? Don't feel embarrassed. Two of her teeth has been removed. Look at Sorry, I, this is bad. Viewers discretion. I'm sorry, don't feel bad. We are disciplined people. But just so that we we'll celebrate God. Check, no hole. Look at this. No hole. I can't see any hole here. There was, your teeth was removed. Two teeth was removed. Who knows her? Who knows her? Is it true that the teeth was removed? Who is that? It, it's true. You are sure of that? Her name is Dorcas. Look at, and the teeth have been filled supernaturally. Give Jesus a big, Hallelujah. big hand, big hand, big hand of prayer. Hallelujah. Now, all of you that are standing for anything, if you are standing for anybody, when you go back, send the person a text and say, I just stood in for you now. Believe and receive. Are you hearing me? Send them a text. Don't let them roam around. You are here suffering to stand in for them. They are not connecting again. Hallelujah. And because you are standing here, it's impossible for you to face anything called barrenness. I hope you know that. The Bible says, And when Job 
prayed for his friends. God turned his own captivity. Job 42 verse 10 and 11. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. Look at as many people. Lift your hands. Some of you, the power of God will come upon you on behalf of the people there. My God, children, the Bible says, are a heritage from the Lord. And Father, you have made this place an apostolic ground in this city where there are tangible proofs, evidences that Jesus is alive. Right now I pray, according to the measure of grace, every yoke of bondage, tell me, every curse, every fibroid, no spam count, every devil of darkness that is responsible for impotency or barrenness, be lifted now in the name of Jesus. Be lifted now in the name of Jesus. The power of God is coming upon some of you on behalf of your family members. I release miracle children. I release miracle children. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. On behalf of those you are standing for, they will come back rejoicing, testifying. Every spirit of darkness responsible for unfruitfulness. If they don't have womb, we create new wombs now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Return back rejoicing. Send them a text that they have been prayed for. And let me tell you, see, listen, hold on, hold on. There are some who take in but lose the child. Is that true? Lift your hands on behalf of them because some is not that they don't take in. They take in one month, two months, they just wake up in the morning and they just see blood. That devil is a liar. Are you hearing me? Tonight is miracle service. My God, I pray. The Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that started this work, that same hand will perfect it. I pray no more miscarriage. In the name of Jesus, everyone standing here, Return with dramatic testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Please go back rejoicing. God bless you. Hallelujah. Pastor Jake, Bishop Stan, please come. Please come. They'll just be ministering to you in a few minutes. Hallelujah. I know that there are areas that they will minister to you. While that is happening, pass the prayer request, please. This is the time for God to visit your case. Please, as you are passing it, be praying in tongues. As your person be praying in tongues, say, Lord, this is it. My time has come. If they didn't call you, your prayer point will call your case now. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. Pastor Jake, so just minister by the grace of God. And then Bishop Stan, sir. Please write your prayer request quickly. God will touch you. Hmm. God's going to be touching some of you, especially what you desire from Him. Specifically, some of you, God's going to be activating some anointing upon your life. And on your kind of anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm sensing it being poured on somebody's head. There are people. The Lord will be pointing it upon your head. 
One of you, the anointing will be so heavy on your leg. Heavy, heavy. They will literally have to carry you out of this place. <laughs> they will literally have to carry you out of this place. Blessing, blessing. God is blessing some people. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Blessing, God is blessing you. Please, those of you that are starving presently, like leaders in fellowship, just lift up your hands. Speak like those of The Lord wants to reward you. God will touch you. He will reward you. God will reward you right now. Those of you serving, the Lord will reward you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let a reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you. The Lord will reward you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will be out to you to bless you. The Lord will be out to you to bless you. The Lord will surprise you. Thank you, Jesus. Please, that question is a, is your pantry. Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having unusual stomach pains. Your pantry. I think pantry should be in stomach, right? Pantry, pantry, pantry. That's why here, pantry. Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having that problem. Right now, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release healing. Let healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus, let healing come to your body. Healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord is going to be touching some people's eyes and you begin to have visionary experiences. The Lord is going to be touching. You feel like fire in your eyes as I pray with you right now. You feel like fire in your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. You begin to have visionary experiences. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let the wind of God touch your eyes. Let the wind of God touch your eyes. The wind of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the wind of God touches your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. While Apostle was ministering, God told me about somebody among us, I don't know, they might be more than one. The devil gives you food to eat in the kingdom. And when you are done eating that food, you become healthy. I don't mean physically, spiritually. Let me clear this it's possible for God to do an impartation for you. It's possible for God to do an impartation for you in the dream by giving you food, angel bread. It's a spiritual one. But this one I'm talking about, the devil ministers it to you in the dream. And when you are done eating it, you wake up and feel less spiritual. You feel this heaviness upon your body and upon your spirit. If you are the one I'd like to pray with you. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I rebuke that spirit. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. Go! In the name of Jesus. Go! Thank you, Father. I thank you in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. You are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I declare freedom. Freedom in the name of Jesus. You are free. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.
He will minister to you. Who dropped this picture? What happened to the baby? Dead. The baby was born crippled. That devil is a liar. What did he say? No socket. This baby will stand and will walk. Let me tell you, if your prayer request gets here, it will be answered. Let me pray for marriages. Lift your hands before I pray for this. Just three things now. Marriages. Hallelujah. The Bible says your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children will surround your table. Remember, we always share the scripture here. Please make sure you really lift your hands. Please lift inside and outside. I pray right now. Especially for those that have exceeded the normal time. You, you understand what I'm saying, right? The normal time that should happen. You are a man. You can't get a decent lady that is ready to settle down with you. And now, as I'm praying this prayer, hear me. God is going to visit people. But some of you, if you know that you are not walking according to the ways of the Lord, stop it this night. Praise God. You can't be sleeping around Hopping around from man to man. One army officer to another one. One banker to another one. And then say, I don't have a husband. No, no. The Bible says, come out from among them. And be ye separate. We are a holy people here. And holiness is a big thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as you are lifting up your hands, make sure that you are making a commitment. No sex before marriage. Don't let anybody deceive you. I'm saying it straight to the point. Hallelujah. No sex before marriage. No caressing. No all this nonsense that people do. No. Don't, don't open up yourself for demons. You tie your soul with demonic things. Be sure that you are going to keep many Christian relationships are not pure. Because a lot of people think everybody is doing it. No. Not everybody is doing it. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand upon it? So, sister, just get it straight. Don't say yes to any brother who plans to just, if he does not have enough patience to honor you and wait, whatever is foreseen him, let him carry it out of your life. Hallelujah. I need to say this before I pray for you. God is not a magician. Are you listening to me? This is not a herbal center. This is a place where Miracles happen by definite kingdom principles. Hallelujah. So make sure as you are standing here to receive, you are serious with God. And you've been involved in all these things I'm talking about. Stop it this night. Stop it this night. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, you put this as an apostolic platform to help and to build people and to terminate the works of darkness and father this night I pray for your people inside and outside and our online community I declare every yoke of marital delay right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost by the fire of the Holy Ghost be free from it now be free from it now. Anyone here who is of a marriageable age right now, we connect you to your life partner in the name of Jesus. And I pray that anyone here who is under any yoke, because there are some of you, it's not just you, all the ladies in your house, some you notice that you marry almost at age 40. No matter what you do, no matter how decent you are, you will never just get a faithful man. Some of you is married men that keep chasing you. As young as you are, you can't get a godly brother. You are coming to church. You are serving in church. 
the brothers are looking at you as if they are looking at this speaker and then it's only a married man with children that are old enough to be your age who will be disturbing you that joke of bondage this night kapoto seka repato se telebata aparato koposo bata let that yoke be broken in the name of Jesus let that yoke be broken I release into your marital destiny I release you sisters I release you sisters I release you brothers I release you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord now please is this all the prayer requests in one minute we are going to pray and then there are three areas three more areas I need to speak finance breakthrough this is very important please keep your spirit open if possible just be praying in tongues let me invite the ministers pastor williams please come bishop come we are going to pray pastor williams is going to lead us hallelujah let me tell you something as the servant of god is speaking on this thing and as we are agreeing i want you to this is not a ritual don't take it as a ritual the scriptural revelation behind this for those of you who are just coming the bible says how that listen 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 Ezekiah took the threat letter are you listening to me a threat letter was written and the bible says he took it to the altar and dropped it before god when hannah needed a miracle the bible says she came to the altar are you hearing me this is the revelation behind this we don't do anything without revelation so i want you to connect everybody rise up and stretch your hands just stretch your hands towards this stage please those outside just stretch it towards your screen and begin to pray in tongues. Sheka pakata baladaba, rakata tapaka prokota baladaba. Sechala brakata sata le, leka lumi ibra kata sata la ba. Sebra di kodosh ina rakata la brakata le, leka kata kama bratisha. Sebre ni na kala zebi na kata siya, rakata skado le brate kama balusha. It's the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jehovah, Father of all spirits, the great I am, my Jesus, to be glorious in a makatas pata, lift the patas the kabala, the one that divided the red sea, lift us the patas the kabala, the one that released manna, Paul released manna from heaven, Jehovah, in the name of your Son Jesus Christ, I pray for miracles, miracles. Miracles upon this prayer request. Miracles, visitations, miracles, visitation. Far above, far above all they have written. Far above, far above. Connection, completion, perfection in the name of Jesus. Completion, perfection in the name of Jesus. Miracles. Miracles, visitation, divine visitation, Jehovah, Jehovah, miracle worker upon this request. Preach upon it, preach upon it, preach upon it. Let there be miracles. Let your people testify in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jehovah. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are a prosperous ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are a prosperous ministry. Mysteriously prosperous. By the hand of God. I believe in prosperity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe you cannot truly represent the government of heaven with poverty. You cannot help the poor by being one of them. Are you hearing me? And I want to pray for you. Please believe. Lift your hands. 
again, listen. The irrefutable laws of prosperity remain tithing, kingdom investments, and your giving. They open the heaven and position you. And then the blessings begin to come through divine ideas, favor, wisdom, the blessings of God upon your hands, strength and long life. Hallelujah. I want to encourage everybody. Please bring out this speech. I can't pray for you for prosperity just like that. Please. Please. If you don't have a revelation of what you are doing, just keep your seat, please. This is not some. I will help you. Let me tell you the truth. I'm not going to help you. It's not just about saying receive. No. Please. God has blessed you. You can help somebody by your side. Please. Please. Bring out something that will cost you. Some of you are greedy and stingy. Please, let me tell you something. I pray for you that giving grace will be part of your life. Many of you think God is out to rob. You can't outgive God. Hallelujah. The secret of prosperity is giving. It will never change. There are many of you God has been speaking to you. You won't listen. I can't tell you how many times God has instructed me to empty my accounts. If you see, if your heart is still on prosperity, God will never give you. He said, my son, give me your heart. Until you conquer greed, you are not entitled to handle true riches. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please bring out the seed. Some of you will bring out something that will cost you. Let me tell you, don't pity yourself. Don't pity yourself at all. Don't make foolish, impulsive decisions. Are you hearing me? We are not manipulating people. Don't make stupid decisions that you come outside and no, no. Make some of you God is speaking to you right now. Some of you need to stand for your families. Honestly, honestly, see if the ministry is blessed and you are not blessed, it means we are fake. Something is wrong. Are you hearing me? I tell you, this big prosperity oil, there is an oil, it will come upon some of you in a fearful way. Please, inside and outside, I beg you. If you don't have a seat, can you hold the hands of somebody who has a seat? Please connect. Allow the person to hold your hands. Don't feel bad. Please stand up, everybody. This is a very serious thing. Lift your hands and lift your hands. Hear me. Solomon, there was a sacrifice upon the altar. And Solomon said, Oh God, oh God. Attend unto your people whenever they call you that you will respond. And the Bible says the glory, the satina of God came and filled that day. I'm praying. I'm praying. See, I tell you, it, it, it pains my heart. It pains. We want you to the full gospel. You must represent the kingdom in its entirety. We don't just want you to be anointed and be begging and be sleeping with men for money. No. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please listen. Some of you, what will come upon you is the giving grace. Because honestly, for some of you, it's greed. Greed. Even to yourself. Lift it up. I want to pray. Oh, God has given us this anointing. And I want to pray. My God, it will happen. It's going to come on like fire. It will fall on many of you. Please help me. My God, I pray. The oil of prosperity. The power to get wealth. At the count of three. My God, let it fall mightily. Right now. One. Two. Three. Take it. 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 I activate it outside. I activate it. Let fire come upon your seed. I give your seed a voice in the spirit. It took a sacrifice to put your family in poverty. We use this sacrifice 
to bring them out of poverty is to a sacrifice to enter a covenant of poverty. We take this seed and bring you into the realm of blessing. Psalm 66 verse 12 He said, Thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through waters and through fire, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. My God, you know we are not fake. We are not just trying to do religious jamboree to take money from people. I pray, my God, I give your seed a voice and I instruct it. Go around the earth, gather your kind, and return back to the owner. I prophesy under this apostolic unction. I speak to your seed. Go around the earth, gather your kind. Go around the earth, gather your kind. Go around the earth, gather your kind, and return a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Please cast your sneeze with joy. Pray to me. Help me. Please bring me off of us. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray. Finally, before the altar call, breakthroughs. There are families that need major breakthroughs. Are you hearing me? There are some of you, your, the way from the day they gave birth to you, you have never celebrated entering a house that God gave your own family. Embarrassment after embarrassment. Every time they start a building project, rain will wash it or something satanic will happen. Breakthrough is when the limitations that are stopping you are taken away. Lift your hands. The Bible says, Thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left. Thou shalt break forth. Please receive it. Some of you need to call your loved ones and say, Look, a prayer was prayed. There are some houses that have been built. Ten years. Ten years is a cost. It's a cost. I'm telling you. There are some people, they are, they are lecturers, but they are still begging for money to feed. This is, this is a yoke of bondage. There are families that live from hand to mouth. Some of you, as you are looking at me now, you are the ones who are the breadwinners of your entire family, as young as you are. It ought not to be so. The Bible says a good man lives an inheritance not taken from his children's children. Lift your hands, please. Where is the God that brings breakthrough? Where is that God that changed the story of Samaria by the mouth of the prophet? Where is that God that instructed the prophet to say, by this time, my God and my King, I pray for Koinonia in the name of Jesus. Let this breaker anointing, like the angel of death in the days of Moses, let this breakthrough anointing begin to go from house to house, house to house, house to house. We send it to Abuja, we send it to Saria, we send it to Kodi State, we send it to Lagos, we send it to Kaduna. Like the angel of death visited this home. This night, this night, this night, I speak. This night, let this anointing go to families and create the garden of Eden. Let it create the garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you? have noticed the sudden death of professors how many of you have noticed it have you seen the way lecturers are dying like chickens how many of you know it's not normal see the bible says they know not you do not know what is happening this night this night the angel of the lord will move across every are you hearing me all tasks of darkness will be destroyed see this is why god put planters like this to legislate on behalf of territories the apostolic grace is not from making mouth 
is for taking charge. He said, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. The church is the light of the world. The church cannot be here and things are happening. If your father is a lecturer or you live with a lecturer, I want you to lift your hands. We want to prophesy that oil of exemption. Hallelujah. It's terrible. People are afraid right now because nobody knows who is next. I pray for you. See, when the angel of death, hear me, when the angel of death came to Goshen and Egypt, the angel of death killed everybody. It's just that when he came, he found out that some houses were already killed. When he saw blood on their house, he said, these people are already died. And he passed by. I pray, that blood of sprinkling, that blood, he said, when I see the blood, Rapato go paratata, not by accident, not by terrorism. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command supernatural preservation. Receive it now. Supernatural preservation. Receive it now. Every lecturer in APU and in all the institutions in this town. Because I already see the arrows of death on some lecturers. The Lord is ministering to me. And I'm seeing that between now and December 4, I see four other professors going. But we stop it. We change it. In the name of Jesus. We stop it. We change it. We stop it. We change it. We stop it. He said, the heaven of heavens, Mabatakata, Rakatapata, Betopotokotalapatika. The heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth has He given. Now let me pray for you, 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 you have no covenant with death. We are entering the ember months now. Hallelujah. Please, see, take seriously the things that happen here. Are you hearing me? Liver is the power of God that is bringing her upstage. It's a sign and a wonder. Just cover her. Hallelujah. Please, we are out of time. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. See, listen. Hear me, those inside and outside. Never believe. Hear me, please. Now, and I don't want you to feel bad. I know that there are a lot of people here that have had to lose loved ones. We stood by your body. Don't let the death of your loved one suddenly make you give up for Satan and say he can ride into your family anytime. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every time death is ravaging people, God will summon the people and anoint men to lift up a cry. I want to pray for you. Ember month is the time when people look at how many people just graduate from ABU. Going back, they die. Don't tell me that's the will of God. Some of you, as they are giving your parents work, that's it. If there is a shrine, there is a greater shrine. See, this is the speaking of altars. Every altar speaks. Us that the blood of Jesus speaketh better things. I want to speak on behalf of people. Lift your hands, please. Because many of us travel. There are some of us who are in business. You travel to Lagos, you travel to Kotono. Some of you are moving around. Some of you are coming from different places. My Juguri, Joss, Bauchi. Come out of her now. Out. Out of her. Now, a very violent spirit. Lift your hands. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am protected from the arrows that fly by day 
and the noisome pestilence I declare that throughout this year I have no covenant with the spirit of death say death share my voice I am an ambassador and in the name of Jesus the seal of the blood is upon me I am protected my family members are protected Father in the name of Jesus I believe your word and I declare that I enjoy supernatural preservation in my going out and in my coming in say in my going out and in my coming in therefore I pray for you that as you have declared let your eyes live to see the experience in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah you've not given your heart to Jesus please remain standing everyone here please remain standing hallelujah you have not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ this is a family this is where we are ready to introduce you to the love of your life the Bible says whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away many of us have been struggling you've been struggling some of you are born again you've given your heart to the Lord truly but there are encumbrances pushing you away from God right now please everybody stand I know you've been standing please stand for one last time inside and outside let's honor God and let's honor the greatest miracle that is about to happen young and old rich or poor as you hear my voice thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media